Hello everyone. Filmed this earlier this week in a lunch break and uh, the audio on it was pretty awful so I came back to film again. I've been asked to get a like a walk around tour of what my uh, 2050 Super Cab is like. Uh, a couple folks, one's got it on order, it's not going to be in until next April. Uh, another person I believe up in Alaska has one that's coming in this month they haven't already got it. So I'll give the, uh, the walk around on the outside then we'll go inside and take a look. Have the uh, prop off mine at the moment after a run in with a rock last weekend while out steelhead fishing. But I've got a uh, Honda 150. on mine that does quite well. Um, at the time, my boat's a 2017, and on the 2017, I believe top rated was the 150 horse. Um, from what I've seen online, it looks like the newer model 2050s have 175 horse top rated. But for now, I get by with the 150 quite well. My boat has seen a fair amount of use. Um, in the last three years and starting to pick up more now you can see uh, i picked aluminum because i wanted something durable i'm not sure how well it'll turn out but here and here there are a couple of beams on the side right on one of the pontoons that's from a encounter with some extremely swift water and a dock with some uh, floating steel uh, tubes they tried to use as a breakwater. It didn't work out too well for me. Um, last weekend, we ended up had this side up on some rocks along the shore. That's how I ended up getting the prop into a submerged rock. But you can see underneath here, it's really nothing big that shows up as far as scratches or scrapes. So overall, I'm loving having aluminum and uh, we'll never regret not getting fiberglass and we'll probably never own anything fiberglass at least out here on the sound so front wise mine came with the um the roller guide for the anchor i ended up picking up the anchor it's not as a lamar uh let's see 16 pound does more than enough um, for my needs come with the windlass um, you can also see up here it's like looking right into the sun so I'm not sure how well this will turn out but the only other ding I have on here that ding was from pulling a stranded sailboat in um, to the Everett Marina into their slip area and then get, getting caught up in some really swift current afterwards and uh, having a run in with another boat um, anchor so but it's like an old chevy truck every little scar tells a story so i'm not too worried about it only complaint i really have on the thing is the uh single wiper if, if it's going to be a single wiper, I'd almost rather have one dead center of the windshield that was a lot wider sweep. And uh, the only thing that I've actually had to replace on here has been the wiper motor. The shaft on the wiper motor right in here that this locks onto sheared off. Uh, it's made out of like a cast metal. So it sheared off and left me wiperless out in some pretty rough waters. But um, ordered a new wiper motor, put it in, and instead of setting it to wide, the wide sweep, I've got it now fairly narrow because the other thing it was doing when I picked it up, the wiper blade would come all the way over off the edge of the windshield, catch on this, and then pull back up on hard. And uh, for a while, I was blowing fuses left and right because of that. Um, but really, the only, only real complaint that I've had with this the whole time I've owned it, I say it's been incredibly solid. Um, this side, yeah, this side's even got a little scrape. I can't remember what that was from. It may have been something even in the water, but it was enough to peel a small bit of aluminum off there. Um, oh, one other thing. I don't know if this is 
inherent of of my boat or all boats or just AB crafts or but when fueling this the nozzle goes fairly well straight in and you got to be nearby when you're filling it up and uh, if you think you're getting close to full I'd suggest slowing down the flow rate of the fuel going in because this thing anytime I filled it when I've got it on the trailer at a uh, fuel pump every time it, it burps out probably you know a few ounces it's enough to wash down the side and actually uh, roll off onto the ground so it, it's more than just a few drops you know when it hits the top it doesn't shut off the pump before it just it comes burping out but um, other than that, the windshield wiper I've had this thing three years and have no complaints uh, let's see somebody had asked about electronics so antenna wise I've got the Shakespeare Centennial 5101 works very well for me well enough to pick up Puget Sound Coast Guard when I'm up at Baker Lake up in the mountains which from here is probably an hour hour and a half drive so really good range on it um, I think that's it from the outside. We'll go ahead and uh, head inside the boat and show you what it's got there. Okay, coming on board. You can see uh, bait box, step, uh, seat combo. Works well for either. Wash down pump in the rear. The side wells under here have plenty of storage. Um, need to clean it out a bit. Started cleaning it out two weekends ago. And... Um, Decided to go fishing last week and so I brought some of the stuff back in a hurry. But we have rod holders. We got four across the rear. All right. Two on each side. And then the rocket launchers across the top have another eight. So coming up top, you see it's a pretty solid top uh, more than adequate to sit on or stand on or um, potentially a better place to haul my crab pots than on the deck as, uh, be just as easy to haul them up here and tie them down well on the rails instead of uh, having them bounce around the back of the boat but then coming on around the front up here then you see the Maxwell windlass came with uh, I added on the anchor Found a local that had sold their boat, was selling 150 foot of uh, the chain I needed. So picked that up to replace my older chain and put it on a couple hundred foot of um, rope as well. So I can anchor out comfortably in a hundred foot of water. Uh, if I'm gonna overnight somewhere, 50 foot's not a problem. You know, if I ever get to that point. I say the wiper, you can see the wiper sweep is from where it's at to about center here at the moment which is more than enough to um, to see out of but again I wish I had a wider sweep or a second wiper uh, if you're in the passenger side you can't see out if you need to look out from the uh, driver's seat through this direction you really can't see well either what I've taken to doing is trying to rain X the windshield fairly well and um, seems to help you know as long as i keep it up but you know it's one of those things you have to keep up or it does wear off um other than that as far as exterior goes not a whole lot else i will say it does a great job of keeping the deck dry a buddy that went out with me last week can even comment on that anything that comes up over the top has a tendency to hit here and stop wash back forward or if it runs off the side it's got a, a drip rail where it comes in it will fall off and then you see lower here it's got a welded on divider that will trap water before it rolls rearward and sweep it off to the side. Uh, LED lights all around that are very bright. Really like those as well. So let's head on inside. Like I said um, earlier, I'm working on getting everything clean totally out. Scrub it down good before the winter fishing starts heavily. Um, good ventilation in here. I've got the window open roll up the rear vinyl and get really good airflow through. Most of the summer months, I don't even take the vinyl off. 
unless it's going to be seriously hot and I'm going to be out very frequently. Other than that, I just leave it up. Uh, one other thing, it's I won't say it's missing, but one other thing I want to add for my own use after getting caught out last week at night is uh, any type of interior lights, right? There's no interior lights at all. So there's a few panels up here that pull loose easily. I'm thinking about going ahead and wiring in some interior cabin lights, uh, possibly a couple up here, a couple of duck lights. And then under the V-berth area, I'd like to put in some as well. So uh, it does come pre-cut for, they're either over six and a half, but maybe a seven inch. We'll have to measure it for certain speakers and comes pre-cut for one of the fusion stereos as well uh, only other electronics i've got at the moment i've got the lawrence link 8 which gives me AIS, ais data so i can see where the big commercial ships are at and then for a chart plotter i'm running the lawrence hds carbon 9 which I believe is the precursor to the one now that's the uh, Lowrance Live, I believe they call it, or HDS Live. But it's worked really great so far, learning more about it every time I'm out. Uh, these controls, I believe, all come pre-wired from Stabycraft. Mine has the Maxwell winch. I get the Maxwell switch and just notice I'm missing a little plug here. No telling where that's at. See what I can find. But um, gauges are all Honda. The only other problem I've had, and this may be the pitot tube on back clog, but to check, but my uh, speedometer in here is intermittent on when it works. Control wise, it's the standard Honda single engine, right? Uh, power trim, trolling mode, so I can troll down to I think 650 RPM. Uh, I have a fast idle as well, which is nice. Use that a lot. Use it mainly when I'm winching up my anchor. All right, I'll bump the idle up. So I'm actually not just putting a pure draw on the battery, but got a little bit of power coming back in. V-Birth at the moment is, well, a train wreck. I had it totally cleared out. And then, like I say, last weekend brought a bunch of stuff back. Some of those things I brought back, I just dumped into trash bags to get out of here, which is like my uh, rain gear, some blankets. Uh, you can see trash bags, but there's plenty of room under here and does have the flip down panel that when I have the pads in uh, there's a long pad goes this section two at the front one on each side you can see the mounting tabs right and then big river feet that mount on the crossbars and then this has a panel that sits in it so when you're um, out on the water you can haul a lot of your gear up here that you don't want bouncing around on hard surfaces and it's pretty well enclosed and padded a padded well other than the side walls which are carpeted but pure aluminum otherwise anchor well up front you can see it's fairly deep That's 150 foot of chain in mine, plus another 200 foot of line. But I've seen videos saying that that can get corrosive and problematic. I haven't honestly looked at mine, but I'll pull it out here in a month or two. And take a look inside and see what it looks like when it's bad, clean it up some, and try and put some type of preventative treatment on it. But anyway, the uh, V-Birth up here is definitely comfortable enough if you want to go out, take a nap. Um, even a lot of the summer months, if you have the vinyl off, the windows open, you still won't get overly hot down there. Winter months, it's pretty easy to stay warm. A light sleeping bag or some blankets and uh, not, a, not a huge deal. But yeah, it's pretty much it, you know. A couple storage cubbies on the side for passenger and driver. Drink holders. Um, that's pretty much it. Everything, everything's aluminum, other than the cushions that go under the V-berth that are wood backed with padding and vinyl, and same for the seats, right? But everything else is aluminum. There's really nothing to complain about.
master power kill right master fuse tech back under here right deck wash the uh, I'm gonna say it's not a live well um, so I guess it's kind of a toss-up on how you want to use the compartment that's here it does have a drain I've just you know filled the bottom of it with ice before and used it for the day as a cooler instead of bringing a cooler um, we kept fresh water in here for some of the uh, crab catches before but you know easily turned into a live well if you want bait board's been solid just noticed last weekend out that my uh, hinge is broken but not completely it's got enough pressure to still hold it in place but one thing else to put on the list of things that need some work get the knife slots for everything battery well is underneath at the moment I only have a single battery on the uh, list of things I'll probably do in the future if I keep this baby craft is add additional batteries so I've got a dedicated start battery and then I have some where if I want to stop and drift for a while but still keep the fish finder and every radar and everything else running I can I have to add radar first but you get the idea so yeah anyway that's uh, it for the walk around on mine um, I guess you know here's the transom heard their game chains or transom I will say that you can uh, back up and control your direction of travel in reverse with this thing exceptionally well it's uh, pretty crazy what it can do um, sometimes I'll have to film that while I'm actually out on the water live post what it looks like going you know in reverse at speed but anyway if you like stabie crafts uh, you like fishing out on Puget Sound or in general hit that subscribe button down there ring the little bell to get notifications and if you like the video uh, give it a like please that'll uh, help me out a lot here hope to someday maybe monetize this channel to pay for uh, more boat fuel and uh, lures so I can go out and fish more often and film more for now that's it um, talk to everyone again soon this will just be a bonus update for everyone so I'll have more to come in a week thank you